If you have a Bible, you can turn to Isaiah 60. We're going to continue in our sermon series called Set Apart. Uh, Pastor Nathan kicked us off. He's been leading the charge the last three weeks. And I'm going to bring us home today. We're closing out this sermon series. Uh, and if you have missed any of them, you can go to YouTube and you can pull those up and you can uh, catch up with us. But the word set apart, you know, Pastor Nathan kicked it off, you know, set apart or that root word is holy. We talked about the holiness of God and, and the importance of it and how it's rooted in our relationship with God. Jesus said that we are in the world, but not of it. That holiness, we live here, but we exist for God and we are set apart for his purposes. And so we've been tracking through the book of Isaiah from the beginning, if you will, remembering, just kind of remembering how it all started, that in the beginning there was a family, right? Adam and Eve, and through Adam and Eve, there's this lineage of people that are coming through. And we get to a man by the name of Abraham, and from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and from Jacob, here comes this nation, these group of people that God assigns, uh, if you will, certain laws or, or rules to live by, and they were set apart. They were set apart and they were called to be and live a certain way according to their God. And then what happens is, is just like it happens with us, because we're running parallel with the children of Israel, if you will. They would obey God, right? You know how it is. We love God. We're, we're excited to be following God and we're doing everything for God. We're reading our Bibles. We're going to church. We're on the prayer calls. We're doing all the things that we're supposed to do. And then as soon as we get what we want, what do we do? Forget God. And we start going astray, just kind of like the children of Israel. Let, let's talk about it this morning, right? We go astray. I'm good now. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves distanced and we find ourselves in some bad places. And then when we're in that bad place, our God, he's merciful, he's kind, he's loving, he's gracious. And what does he do? He comes and he rescues us and pulls us up out of whatever it is we're in. But then what happens? We go back to doing what we were doing after we continue to follow the Lord. So there's this cycle and the Lord is following this cycle. He's just like, wait a minute, something, something's not right. See, in the beginning, I set up certain people on a mission from God. They're called to be something and do something. Just like you and I were sent to this city on a mission from God to do something here in this city. And then Pastor Nathan talked a little bit more about receiving a fresh commission to tear away from the world and live for a higher calling. How many know there's a higher calling according to Jesus' standard? See, society has cheapened and lowered the standards. And I'm going to talk about a little bit right now. Marriage has been lowered. Education has been lowered. There's certain things that have been lowered that are, that are important in the eyes of God circumstances and situations. And so we're called as a people to be set apart, to be different. And then also last week, and this is what I loved about last week. Last week was one of the great messages that I've heard preached in a long time because we got to the real. So many times pastors love to preach these warm, fuzzy, nice feeling messages. But I'm telling you right now, that is not the gospel. And I'm telling you right now, people need to be challenged in their faith and their walk with the Lord. And so last week we talked about that internal inventory, looking in at the deep, dark areas of our life called sin. Anybody ever had to take inventory of your personal life, not somebody else's life, your life? And you got to do that deep inventory of, man, something ain't right. I, I've been looking at this. I've been talking this way. I've been going to places. I've been acting this way towards my spouse and my children and all these things. And God is like, no, no, no. We need to get a fresh revelation of that. I hate sin and I love righteousness. And that God says, man, that sin hurts me. But I love the Lord and I want to make it right. And I know that's tough. And you think about what happened to the children of Israel because of this, they were released or they were sent into exile. And now they're out there flapping in the wind, going through a dark hour of the soul. But today we're going to talk about God's redemption and how much God cares about his people. See, God is not a God that's going to give up on us as people. He's not a deadbeat father. He's a father that cares about his children and he's going to see it through with them. 
Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you this morning for the opportunity to preach your word. I want to say thank you this morning for a fresh revelation. I want to say thank you this morning that somebody in this place is going to get set free today. I want to say thank you this morning that somebody in this place is going to understand how much you care deeply about them and that you want them to see it through, not to give up, not to quit, not to shut down, but to be the man or woman of God that you created them to be. And I want to say thank you that you've called us to be collective and to be set apart, to be different, so that when people come out, from the city and into this church. They're going to see something they want, and his name is Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bible, Isaiah 60. Now, I just need to talk a little bit about Isaiah 60 because it can be a little difficult. See, Isaiah 60 is now that the children of Israel have come out of exile and they're starting to make their way back into Jerusalem. Good things are happening. You know, you remember just a little bit how Nehemiah got the green light to go back and rebuild the wall. All of a sudden you get to hear stories of just hope and man, things are going to get better. And so here this prophecy, it starts off and I need to explain that it's going to unfold. There's, there's layers here. There's layers to this prophecy. It doesn't just start with one thing. See, there, there's, there's a closer fulfillment. There's, they're going to be talking about the return of Israel to its nation and wealth. They're talking about the coming fulfillment, the time when it's built in its, all its glory and all uh, 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 must support Israel or be destroyed. It, it's going to talk about the further fulfillment when the new Jerusalem descends from heaven to earth and a final fulfillment that is a better described in other places. But has a glimmer of hope right here, what we're going to talk about today. I need you to understand that there's layers to this prophecy. And what do I mean by layers? See, you can get a word from God. I can get a word from God in the beginning. See, I was called to preach the word of God. That's all I heard prophetically. You're called to preach the word. I'm like, great, man, I'm called. That's, that's, that's what I'm wonderful. I don't know what that means, but I'm called. And then all of a sudden, there came definition to that calling. See, the first stop was a campus missionary. And then from there, that calling evolved. And then I went and became uh, uh, the national director reaching historically black colleges and universities. I was over that for a season alongside our campus missions. And then I remember being a youth pastor. And then I remember being a, a, an associate lead pastor. And I remember being a lead pastor. And so there's this evolving and that's what we're going to see in this scripture verse here today. And before I get started, also, there's something about this scripture I need you to really understand. There's something that I learned. We're all learners, right? Yeah. Haven't arrived. But if you're not careful with this scripture, you can find yourself in a bad place because there's something going around in our culture and in society we call, we call replacement theology. And what is that? It's a notion that the church has replaced Israel. But I'm here to tell you that God is not like that. God has a plan for the Jewish people, that he's not done with the Jews. There's something that God is up to with them. And so it says this in Romans 9, 1 through 11. Paul is telling a group of Gentiles and he's explaining that God is not done with the Jews. He explains the Gentile believers have become branches in a tree, which was originally only made up of Jewish believers. But God has not moved on from the Jewish people to the Gentiles, replacing Israel as his special people. Instead, God is sovereignly and graciously providing us, the Gentiles, with the opportunity to be included in God's covenant with Israel. And I need us to get that. There are big brothers and sisters in the faith, and without them, there would have no be no Messiah. There would be no Christ, and we would be in trouble. I'm preaching real good this morning. This afternoon, I ain't even got warmed up. Yeah, let's go to Isaiah 61 through 22. Arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. The nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you all assemble and come to you. Your sons from afar, your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will thrive and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you to the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian, Ephah, and all of Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All of Kedar's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Neboeth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar. 
and I will adorn my glorious temple. Verse eight, we are those fly along the clouds like the doves, their nests. Surely the islands look to me in the lead of the ships of Tarshish, bringing your children from afar with silver and gold to honor the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has endowed you with splendor. Foreigners will build your walls and kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you in favor, I will show you compassion. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night so that the people may bring you wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. For the nations or kingdom that you will not serve will not will perish but be utterly ruined. Verse 13, the glory of Lebanon will come to you, the juniper, the fir, the cypress together to adorn my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place with my feet. The children of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet, and you will call you the city of the Lord, Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Although you have been forsaken and hated, with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all generations. You will drink the milk of the nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold. Instead of silver, place of iron. Instead of wood, I'll bring you bronze and I'll br iron a place of stones. I'll make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor destruction or within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Verse 19, the sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again. Your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will end. Then all the peoples will be righteous and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I've planted, the work of my hands, and for display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest of mighty nation. I am the Lord, and this time I will do this swiftly. Can you say this with me this morning? It is bigger than you. It is bigger than you. See, the children of Israel didn't get it. See, all this stuff from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob... And all of a sudden becoming a nation and going through the good, the bad and the ugly. And all of a sudden understanding that, man, they're in exile and they're out there flapping in the wind. And kind of you, could you imagine how quick it could have been for them to give up, to quit because it was difficult and it was hard? How many times have you felt and I felt that God has abandoned you in your dark, difficult hour of the soul? But I'm here to tell you that what God started, he brings to completion. When God says a thing, he will do a thing. And so we have to understand, which is my first point, that we can not quit. That's good. See, if the children of Israel quit, if they give up, if they turn it over and they just say, man, I'm done. Where is God? Why are we in this place? It's bad for us. Then it's going to be bad, not just for them, but it's going to be bad for the world. Philippians 1, 6 says this, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's final finished on the day when Jesus Christ returned. So it was a little difficult. It didn't make sense. See, they're in a dark place. They're in exile. They're in Babylon. They're in a place where, man, their women are being raped. Their children are being stolen from them. Man, it's bad. But God is saying, look, you need to go ahead and deal with the situation as is. And you need to plant and you need to grow and you need to do what needs to be done. As you are blessed, the city will be blessed. And said, God is saying, I'm not done with you. I'm going to bring you out and something great is going to happen. But you have to not quit. See, a lot of times people quit, and there's an author by the name of Lisa Whittle in her book, The Hard Good. It's called The Hard Good. She mentions a conversation with a dear friend. Hard, good, end on the good. The hard is part of the journey, but the good is where we will land. She goes on to say, you will have to stay with God through the uncomfortable process to get there. There's no way around. Up to now, you may have thought that the reason you've never got anywhere was because life is too hard. But the real reason is because when life gets hard, you keep bailing on where God wants to take you and you keep having to start over. 
See, when things get difficult and things get hard, you can't quit. You can't check out. You got to press in. You got to fight through. And that's what I love about the children of Israel. They didn't just stop. They kept pressing in and saying, you know what? I'm going to continue to follow God no matter what. But there was a season that when they did things opposite of the Lord, what would God say? Take another lap around that mountain. See, do you want to continue to take that lap around the mountain? Or are you going to say, you know what, I'm going to continue and I'm going to be a man or woman that's quick to repent and quick to forgive. See, I want to get it right with God the first time, not the second time. Be quick to repent and quick to obey. Galatians 6, 9 says this. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. There's something coming. I left this out in this first service, but in Habakkuk 1 5, there's some things that God is going to do for you and I. And if he were to tell you and I, we wouldn't even believe it. Habakkuk 1 5. You ever been afraid to hear something, man, like God, somebody come to you and says, it's going to be this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And it's too good to be true. And this is what God is speaking over the children of Israel. There is something I'm getting ready to do through you. There's someone I'm going to bring into your midst that he's going to bring and he's going to restore this nation. He's going to restore you as a people. And he's going to bring people that don't look like you, that don't talk like you. I'm going to graft them in. I'm going to bring them in to be a part of something great. And this is what we talk about this light. Who is this light? The light is the Messiah. It is the Christ. It is Jesus. For there will become a time when Jew and Gentile will reign together. Man, that had to be a difficult word for them for a season and all their life. They heard that, man, Gentiles are unclean. Man, we can't be with those kind of people. They don't talk like us. They don't dress like us. They don't act like us. And so I have to stay away from them. But no, there is a time where Jesus is coming to bring everybody together. And isn't that making you happy? Because it makes me happy because I know that's how he created and that's what he died for. Arise and shine for your light is coming. Does anybody like the light? Now, y'all, some people like the dark. I know you like to creep around in the dark. You don't want nobody seeing what I do. But you know, there's something about the light. When the light comes, this light, the Redeemer, God tells his people to respond to it. When you see light, you got to respond and arise and shine. See, darkness is for lying down. Light is for rising up. Darkness is for gloom and sleep. Light is for shining. When the light has come, we must respond, arise and shine. Arise and shine. That's what the Lord is speaking to you. And that's what the Lord is speaking to me. Arise and shine. Let's go out and be different. Let our light shine bright for God. Let us not be ashamed of being men and women of God. Let us continue to walk the walk and talk the talk and be the people of God that we're created to be. And let's draw people closer to us and closer to our God. You can't shine until the light has come. But once it's come, there's something wrong if you don't respond to it. Can you remember when that light was shined on your life? I do. I remember there was a moment where I liked the dark. I was, I liked the dark, not just my skin color, but I, you know, I liked the dark. I could talk like that. that's okay. We family in here. Everybody getting all nervous. Oh, man, he said, oh, oh. we good in here. But you walk around in the dark, man, and you just, you know, you just in some stuff. But man, when the light came, Shine the light on your life. And all of a sudden, man, you begin to understand this redeemer and how much he loves you and how much he cares for you. After he touches you, you want to go out and share him with others. The light, the light. There's something about this light. We got to rise and shine. The Bible says in Revelations 21, 22, I did see a temple in the city because the Lord our God almighty, the lamb was in the temple. See, we can talk about Jesus. We can sing about Jesus. We can dance it and all these things about this. But do you know him as your light? See, Jesus is good. The second point I want to make this morning is because they were willing to arise and shine and respond to this light. There's a little transition starting to take place. Now this nation is getting ready to be built and set apart. And there's going to be some people starting to come in influx. But as the influx is coming in, the one thing I want to say to you this morning is that we have to stay focused. So many times we can turn to the left and to the right. We can get nervous. But God said, look up. See, there's something about looking up. He told Abraham to look up. 
Look up, look at the land of Canaan. This is what I'm giving to you. See, when you lift up your eyes to the hills to where your help comes from, your help doesn't come from the hills. It comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth. You got to look up, not look down. See, if I'm looking down, then I'm discouraged. I'm looking down, then I'm fearful. But if I'm looking up, I'm full of faith because I know my God's got me. We got to have eyes to see. Children of Israel had eyes to see, man. You got to be able to look past the hurt, look past the pain, look past the dark days. Man, I love people of faith, people that see the glass half full and not half empty. People that have looked at me and say in that dark hour of the soul when it's bad and when it's gloomy and things are starting to get a little bit better, they always say this, better days are ahead. Better days are ahead. You got a friend like that that'll tell you better days are ahead. See, your bank account may be bad, but better days are ahead. Your marriage may be falling apart, but better days are ahead. Your child may be wayward, but better days are ahead. Your business may be falling apart, but better days are ahead. You may have cancer. You may be sick with infirmity and disease and all hell's breaking loose in your life, but better days are ahead. Better days are ahead. And for those college students here, Fossil may not coming through on your behalf, but better days are ahead. Better days. Better days. This story about this man. I love stories, man. People that just don't quit. They stay the course. They stay focused. They, they, they say, you know what? God is able. If he says he's going to do a thing, he'll do it. As a young man, this is a story. Was fired from a local newspaper and his boss thought he lacked creativity. After a failed animation company went under, he was barely able to pay his bills. Even he even had to eat dog food to survive. With his last few dollars, this man made his way to Hollywood to try to make it big. Unfortunately, his early time in Hollywood was just as bad as it was before. He was told that this little thing, this, this little mouse that you are talking about would fail. And he faced constant rejection and seemed destined to never succeed. But, and here it is, but persistent. He was persistent and went on to grow the company and it eventually began to make amusement parks, feature films, and is known as a cultural icon. This man, his name is Walt Disney. He didn't quit. He stayed the course because it was bigger than him. And I need you to understand, this is what made me laugh. The company that kicked him out, the newspaper that said he wasn't worth nothing, he went back and bought it. He went back and bought it. Stay the course. Proverbs 4.27 says, do not turn to the right or to the left, but keep your foot from evil. You got to stay focused. Children of Israel, man, they're making their way back. And yeah, it could have been easy to turn to the left and say, man, I don't want to go back into that. I don't want to have to live set apart. I don't want to have to be holy as he's holy. But I'm here to tell you the grass is not greener on the other side. As people of God, we need to learn it's okay to be different. It's okay to abstain. It's okay to say no. It's okay to walk out of a place when it's hot and heavy and dark and nasty. It's okay. See, a lot of people think the grass is greener on the other side, and this is an old country saying. It's grass is greener on the other side, but you don't understand underneath the grass, the septic tank is busted. It's nasty down there. It's always looking good. If I could just get over there with those people, if I could just be like them, if I could live the way they're living, everything would be good. But ain't everything always good on the outside. My third point is this, is it, that it's prepare for change. This prophecy is going out and he's explaining to them that there's going to be some people that don't look like you, that don't talk like you, that is getting ready to come in. See, you and I need to be prepared for change so we can come up here and, oh, what's the song we were singing? Uh, miracles in the house and, oh, God, we're going to rend the heavens and we need you, Lord, to come down, break the revival. But if revival comes, oh, oh. oh if revival comes. Are you and I going to be ready? Will you and I be ready when the, the people that are hurting, that are broken, that are like sheep without a shepherd, that are going through that dark hour of the soul in the city, the ones that are the asylum seekers and the migrants, the ones that we've been praying for on the street, the ones that we've been praying in the high risers, the ones you've been praying for in the project. Oh, if they came in, would you be ready? See, you got to prepare for change because when people come through the door, and I'm going to preach this, is that are they going to see something different that's in the world? 
Are they going to come into the house of God and there's strife and there's division and there's all kind of back talk? They're going to come in and see people all bathed and booed up and, and, and live in all kind of ways. Are they going to come in and see something that's authentic, that is sincere, that is real, that they can be who they need to be to get the help they need to get so they can get free by the Holy Spirit and the power of God? Are they going to come in here and get that? See, it's pastors and including us, we've turned the corner. No more preaching this seeker friendly. Oh, it's going to be warm and fuzzy. Live how you ever want to live and go do whatever you want to do. No, we're calling you back to the Bible holiness. Be set apart. And that's what these people are coming into now. As these people are streaming in. Isaiah 42, 6 and 7. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant of the peoples and a light. Here it is for the Gentiles, a light. Light. Something's got to be different if I'm set apart. Am I different? See, when people see Pastor Nathan and Pastor Kaz and I, they always ask, how does this thing work? There's no way. You got, uh, you, you, it's a show. And I'm like, no, 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 you got to understand, we, we live what Jesus said. If you love him and he loves me, I'm his what? Disciple. Because that's how they're going to know is the love I have for one another. So it ain't no fake. This ain't no black, white and Asian show up here. And, you know, hey, we just get along and we're just buddies on, on stage. No, we actually like each other. We actually love each other. Yes, we have disagreements. There's moments. But you know what? At the end of the day, friendship trumps anything. Friendship trumps anything. And so that's how we walk in this house. So when people come through that door, they know that we're genuine and that we're authentic, regardless of color, ethnicity, background. We are together, together. Change is coming to open the eyes to the blind to free the captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Ephesians 2, 19, uh, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of the household. Yes, I like that members. You're, you're, you're no longer strangers, but man, you're being grafted now into this Abrahamic covenant promises what Abraham got you get now so come on in we got some family can't wait can't wait till God begins to move in this place and begins to do some things but we got to prepare ourselves why because it's bigger than us and that's Isaiah could you imagine Isaiah man he's prophesying way out and I know they're scratching their head like, wait a minute, we just got good and comfortable, man. This is our time, man. We're going to be doing this. And you tell people going to come in here that you told us wasn't supposed to. Yeah. He, he, he's going to change the game. He's going to do something. He's going to pull the okie doke. That's what we call the okie doke, man. He said, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to bring this over here. My last point is this. Celebrate what God's done and going to do. See, it's good to look back, man. Anybody ever thank God for the, those moments that you see? It's, I praise God for the good stuff, but I also praise God for the bad stuff. I'm saying, I'm, Lord, thank you that I had to go through that. Thank you that you did that. Thank you that, man, it wasn't comfortable, man. It, it was terrible. It's, I'm just going to say it. It sucked. But you know what? It's all good because you know what? Even the bad, you're going to turn for good. And so I got to go back and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Celebrate what God has done. All that stuff, them going through exile, them going through all that dark hour and stuff. Man, you know what? They came back refined, purified like fire. Man, oh, y'all mad tonight? Y'all ain't saying no, no amen? -ing? Come on, somebody amen me, man. I'm saying the bad stuff. Come on, the bad stuff. That stuff that, man, just had you on your knees crying at night. That stuff that had you shaking and, and counting all your little pennies and, oh, God, I don't know if we're going to make it. That stuff that just shakes you at the core of your soul. Where did it push you back to? Back to the foot of the cross, back to Jesus, back to prayer, back to fasting, back to doing the things that you knew you should have been doing in the first place. It pushed me back there. So even the bad stuff is good. Even the bad is good. And I got to thank him for that. And then what he's going to do. See, this is where 
A lot of pastors don't like to preach this, but how many of you know Jesus is coming back? A lot of people don't want to talk about Jesus. He coming back. And I have to ask myself, and you got to ask yourself, have I, when did I, just a refresher, when did I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and Savior and that God raised him from the dead? Because if I have done that, then I'm saved and I'm going to be okay. And so the Bible says in Isaiah 60, because now he's talking about this new place coming, the new Jerusalem, this place is that, that Jesus is coming to rule and reign. And when heaven and earth connect and all the bad stuff is get ready to go, 60 verse 17 and 20. Instead of bronze, I'll make you gold and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I'll bring your bronze and iron in the place of stones. I'll make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. No longer will be violence in your herd, in your land. There's going to come a day where there's not going to be any more violence, but there's going to be peace. No ruin or destruction within your borders, but you'll call your wall salvation and your gates praise. And here it is. The sun will be no more, but your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon and shine on you. Why? Because the God of God and the Lord of Lords who hung the moon and hung the stars and now going to be that light for you and I. We don't need it no more. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will end. There's going to be a moment where we're all going to be together, Jew and Gentile. People from every tribe and every tongue and every race together. Rallying around that name, that name above all names, Jesus Christ. There's going to be a moment where there's not going to need anything but Jesus. That's it. It's all about him. And so we might as well just get ready to worship because that's what we're going to do. Not now, but in the, in the future. Amen. Revelations 21.1, and I'm closing. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea was no more. Also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. See, the children of Israel, they had to understand that, man, this is bigger than you. And so many times we got to understand that the stuff that we go through and the things that are said and done, it's always for a reason. God never wastes pain. And so if you've been going through it, it is time to arise and shine for your light has come. It's time to, to be the man or woman of God that you've been created to be. It's time for you to stop hiding and start coming out and saying, you know what? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'm not ashamed anymore. This is who I am because I've been holy and I've been set apart by the Most High God. Does anybody believe that this morning? Does anybody feel like, man, enough's enough. Enough's enough. Like, it, it just, I'm, I'm done. I'm done having to be quiet. I'm done having to, to be ashamed. I'm done having to, you know, all of a sudden I have to hide my Bible. I'm done having to, if, if I say amen or if I pray over my food in public, I'm done. Because you know why? That's my God and that's who he's called me to be. And that's how he's called me to live, set apart. I'm done. And so maybe you out there saying, Pastor, pray for me. Because I want to be that man or woman of God who's not ashamed of holiness. Let me tell you something, young women out there. It's okay to stay pure. It's okay not to cross that moral line. It's okay. It's okay, young man, to say, no, not now. I'm going to save myself. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with being different. And it's okay, man or one man of God that's more mature to say, I'm going to be faithful to my bride to the end of days. It's okay. It's okay. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for this sermon series, Holiness Set Apart. Thank you, God, that you called us to be different, and that's okay. 
Lord, I want to say thank you that, Lord, you've set a standard. You're calling us to a standard of living, and that's okay. Lord, I'm praying that, Lord, men and women would rise up to that, that it wouldn't just be a one-time thing. It wouldn't just be, oh, I fasted for a week and I'm done. No, no, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a way of living. And it's not just for me, but it's for my family. It's for my children. It's for my classmates. It's for my people. I, I want to be different. It's okay. Lord, I thank you for men and women willing, willing to say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Maybe to live in the world, but not be of the world. I want to say thank you for that, Lord, for that holy boldness in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen.